Here we're given a linear first order differential equation with the initial condition y of eight equals negative three. We're asked to find the interval in which the solution of the initial value problem above is certain to exist. Looking at our notes below, if we have a linear first order differential equation written in this form with this initial condition, if p of t and f of t are continuous on an open interval from a to b, then there exists a unique solution for every t on the interval. And if we find all the intervals for which both p of t and f of t are continuous, this is called the interval of validity. And if the interval contains t sub zero, which is the input of the initial condition, then there exists a unique solution on the interval that satisfies the initial value problem. So for this example, we're actually looking for this interval here that contains the input value of positive eight. So what we'll do to solve this is first find the interval of validity by determining the interval where both p of t and f of t are continuous, then we'll determine which interval contains the input value of positive eight. But our first step is to make sure the given differential equation is in the correct form to identify the functions p of t and f of t. Notice how this first term must be dy dt, or in our case, y prime. So let's go ahead and divide everything by the quantity t plus six to write this in the correct form. That would give us y prime plus natural log of the quantity t minus five divided by the quantity t plus six times y equals four t divided by the quantity t plus six. Now that it's in the correct form, notice that p of t is equal to natural log of the quantity t minus five divided by the quantity t plus six, and f of t is equal to four t divided by the quantity t plus six. Now we'll determine where p of t is continuous, then where f of t is continuous, then the interval where both are continuous. So looking at the numerator of p of t, we know the input for natural log must be positive, which means the quantity t minus five must be greater than zero. So adding five to both sides, we know that t must be greater than positive five. Now looking at the denominator, we know we can't have division by zero, which would occur when t equals negative six, which means p of t is continuous, where t is greater than five and where t doesn't equal negative six. Notice in this case, negative six is not in the interval t greater than five, so we can actually disregard this and say that p of t is continuous when t is greater than five. We're using interval notation, it would be the open interval from five to infinity. Now let's take a look at f of t. There's no restriction for the value of t for the numerator of f of t, but there is for the denominator, just like before, we know we can't have division by zero, which means t can't equal negative six. So the interval where f of t is continuous using inequalities would be when t is less than negative six or when t is greater than negative six. We're using interval notation We'd have the open interval from negative infinity to negative six union negative six to infinity. So the interval of validity is the interval where both p of t and f of t are continuous, which would be the intersection of these two intervals, which would just be the open interval from five to infinity or when t is greater than five. If we have a hard time seeing this, we can always graph these two intervals and look for the intersection of them. Let's also show that. The graph of t is greater than five would look like this. And the graph of all real numbers except negative six would look like this. So notice how the intersection of these two intervals would just be the open interval from five to infinity or t greater than five. That's the only interval where both functions would be continuous. So again, we can say when t is greater than five or the open interval from five to infinity. So this one's pretty straightforward. 
looking at the initial condition, notice that the input value of eight would be in this interval, and therefore this is the interval in which the solution of the initial value problem above is certain to exist. And looking at this interval here, they do want us to use inequalities with a lower and upper bound, so we'll enter t must be greater than five and less than positive infinity. Remember to enter positive infinity, we enter two lowercase o's, or just use MathQuill. I hope you found this helpful.